Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, they're in the playlist of our entire second season of LFF. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here, and we're gonna be talking about something large format. Today, I'm back in the Midwest Photo Darkroom, and I wanted to make some prints, but not just any prints. There was a project I started working on a long time ago. We're talking a decade ago, over 10 years ago, I started working on a large format project. It was my very first project, and it was all about documenting and detailing all of these lovely little, very American small businesses, barbershops. So we're gonna go through some of the negatives I have here. I'm gonna make as many contact sheets as I can. I'm gonna print these on RC paper today so I can get through a bunch uh, and print them and wash them relatively quickly. And that way we can see just uh, you know, a good representation of that body of the work at the time. Now, disclaimer, I was still very new to a large format camera at this time. I'm not sure how they're gonna look because again, I haven't seen these printed in a long time and I may have different feelings about them now than when I initially made them or even did my first show with them. So let's take a look. So we've got our chemical baths prepared. I've selected six negatives from the Barbershop series, which I think are pretty representative of some of my favorites and some fan favorites. Uh, from that body of work. If you haven't seen the Barbershop series, I'm gonna drop a link down below to my Flickr gallery of everything I did in the Barbershop series, as well as a link to the website, where uh, if you like what you see today, you're gonna be able to purchase some prints as well. I, I do sell prints. I'm a photographer first, and the YouTube stuff is really just to kind of share uh, what I do with you guys. So I've got those prepared. We're gonna be using this Saunders. This is a diffusion type enlarger. I've used it before here on the channel. It's great because I can just dial in my grades, so my multi-grade, either for Kodak or Ilford, and it's variable contrast because we're using VC or variable contrast papers. Meaning if I don't use any color filtration, uh, it's going to be kind of somewhere flat in the middle. This way I can dial it in to get the exact uh, punch or amount of contrast that I need or don't need for the print. And we're going to get our little contact printing frame still taped over from the last time. This is just to give it a mask if I'm using a larger sheet of paper. The 8x10, it's really just a glorified piece of glass and foam that's gonna smush it down to the paper. So let's get the lights off and get printing. Okay, so first things first, let's get our enlarger on, make sure our framing looks good and get our focus into where we can see a nice sharp edge of our printing frame. We're not really focusing anything with this. Uh, we just need to make sure that the light is outside the confines of our printing frame, which it is. And then we're just gonna need to stop down our lens. At this level of brightness, at this preview amount, it is far too bright and it's going to expose my RC paper in like two seconds. That is, that's too short a time. The reason we have an F-stop on our lens isn't just for depth of field of the films we're working with, it's also so we can control our exposure time. We have our timer, which controls our exposure time, our height, which controls our exposure time, the f-stop of our lens, which controls our exposure time, and also our printing filter, which will have an effect on the exposure time. So those are our four main variables. I'm gonna fix the height, hopefully fix the aperture, so all I have to worry about is my contrast filtration and my time. And I want that time to be preferably more than five seconds, closer to 10, so I have a little bit more consistency from print to print. I think f 8s gonna be good. These negatives are uh, some early Pyrocat HD. I also have some negatives that were made with a contrastier staining developer, Obsidian Aqua. So I, I think F11 will force too long a times. I'm gonna start with F8 and go wider open if I need to. So we'll start at F8, and we're just gonna do a test strip of a negative, and we'll go across two, four, six, eight, ten, and see how it goes. All right. Look at that, it just lays, lays right on the paper. It's nice and easy like that. Bring up our frame, down like this. Now there is a bit of a gradient here. Uh, the lower half of the picture is a little bit darker. So in my test strip, I'm gonna go two, four, six, eight, ten, because this is the brightest part of it. And yet another benefit of RC papers, RC papers take less time in the developer, so I only have to have this in 
for 60 seconds. So I'm going to take my tongs, flip it around, and my prints should start coming up. All right, let's turn the lights up. Okay, and 10 seconds is looking like actually a, a smidge on the light side. So we're going to bump it up. We're going to go... Uh, let's start off with 12 seconds and see how the whole print looks. Hey, that's, uh, yeah, that's already pretty nice. Just a little bit of dodging needs to be done on our people in the shot, but yeah, we're, uh, we're getting there a little bit. Let's see if we can see the difference between these two. I think I can already see it. Uh, let's turn the lights on just to be sure. Oh yeah, look at that. Just a little bit of dodge. So I just dodged about two seconds right over their two faces. And it just gives me the right amount of pop right back into it. For not knowing a lot about the camera and knowing how strobes work at this point, it's a pretty good negative. Prints very, very well. I am so surprised. All right, let's head to the next negative and see what we can get. I think I may actually just go not much longer. Let's try just to kind of get the same t the same tone that we get from this print to this one. I think I'm just going to go two more seconds and not really do anything. Okay, so yeah, two seconds difference. It's, it's brought the overall mood down a little bit, which is what I was going for, uh, and really just gave me a, a, just a smidge more separation in these darker values over here, and also brought a difference between the tiling and those bright fluorescent lights, which is perfect. That's, that's kind of what I want. Let's get that into the wash. Careful with the tongs. Drip it off. In it goes. Let's get some fresh water. Right. And let's work our way to the next negative. Uh, this next negative, and hopefully photograph that I make from it, is my top two. There's two pictures to me that are my absolute favorites from the Barbershop series. And this is one that was actually taken here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, this was John Henry Barber and Styling down on Gay Street. And it was so much fun to make. Uh, the barber was so welcoming and just has the right kind of sense of motion to it and it's posed, but it feels natural. I, I love everything about it. Uh, I know this one is a little more dense than the last negative I threw at it, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with 15 seconds straight up and see where we're at. Oh, oh man. It's, uh, it's something to, Look at old scans and mushy archived, uh, you know, web copies. But it is something else to look at your old work printed again. Ah, uh, I mean, there it is. Like, I, I don't know what else I, I want to do to this. I think I'm just gonna make a couple more. I might, I might dodge John a little bit. I might get my little, uh, my little lollipop. This is just a piece of thin wire with, uh, with some gaffer's tape and this is to kind of dodge areas with you know this will be diffused and not show up but this will kind of block light from certain areas but man yes that is all right I'm just gonna make a couple more yes that's all we wanted to go for just a little bit a little bit of lightning that helps tell the viewer look right here 
keeping these corners a little bit dark. That's, that's all we wanted to do. Next up is one of my favorites from the Barbershop series, my, my number one of, uh, one of all of them, which is this barbershop that was my, uh, my uncle's barber in Niagara Falls, New York. This is Joe Kale and Pete Valenti Barbers. And this is, uh, this is our barber and his grandson who actually uh, kind of posed for the shot. It ended up uh, not the way I wanted it to, but it just had its way of uh, really sticking with me over time. There's some things that are common uh, Matt Mirage flaws in the photo. I cut off his foot. I'm showing up in the reflection, but even with that, it's a negative I love, and hopefully you'll see in the print why that is. Oh, there it is. Oh, we could actually go a little bit lighter on this print. I really like the highlights where they're at, though, so what I might do in this instance is... Yeah, the highlights are, are pretty nice where they're at, so I'm just going to do a pretty liberal dodge on, uh, on our barber and grandson here. So just go a couple seconds here, two, three, four seconds here, and see where we land. All we needed, just a little bit of dodge. Yeah, and when you keep the dodge moving and you don't hold it in one place, it feathers it a little bit. So lift it up from the paper and keep it moving. That's one of the biggest things you can do when you're dodging and burning, is keep the motion. Are we doing this? We got four prints in not too long. Let's see if we can't tackle those last two. Uh, now, these, two, these last two negatives are gonna be the hardest to do. Uh, this negative is quite a bit thicker than any of the other ones I've done before, so I'm going to immediately jump my contrast lower. I already have a higher contrast negative, so I'm going to use a lower print grade to help with it. I have been printing everything at a straight two so far. This negative, I am going to move it down, or sorry, move it up to a one and a half and start at 15, 16 seconds, see where that gets me. And then this last negative is a little bit thinner. I'm more than likely gonna need to increase my contrast grade because I have a thinner negative. So let's go. Oh, that is, that is way too flat. Nope, we're taking that, uh, we're taking it the other way. We're gonna go to a three. All right, how about this one? Okay, we're in the right direction, but now I think we just need a little bit of lightning. So we're gonna back off our time. The grade three is right where it needs to be. The highlight detail's fine, but I don't, I don't need that detail there. That's a light bulb. Uh, I want to get this a little bit brighter and a little bit poppier. So let's kind of reduce our time and see where we end up. There it is. Okay, so yeah, we just need a little bit less time. The negative is surprisingly flatter than I gave it credit for. So we just boost the contrast and give it the, uh, the same short time. So it's still easy to be fooled by the negative. But that looks, this looks pretty good. So I try to save the trickiest ones for last, just in case I get to the end of the day and I'm like, ah, you know what, let's pack it in. If you start with the trickiest one first, you're gonna end up with less prints overall. Uh, so this one's a little bit thinner than the others, meaning I'm instantly gonna bump up my grade. I'm sitting between a three and a four right now, which isn't too terrible, but we might need to step it up from there. And I'm also gonna instantly reduce my time because this is a lot thinner. So I'm gonna go uh, grade three and a half, 12 seconds, see where we're at from there. Right there, I'm, I'm losing the shadow a bit. And, and I know there's information in these highlights. This might have to be, uh-huh. Well, it's a good thing we saved this, uh, this one for last. Uh, we're gonna do a split grade on this one. Split grade printing for me is a bit of a last resort technique. It is the result of I have an inadequate negative or I just have a really, really crazy high contrast situation going on in the negative. In the case of this one, this was a very early on negative. I forgot to compensate for Bella's extension factor, and I ended up with a very, very crispy highlight up here in the corner, and a lot of shadow detail that just falls flat if I try to print for this. 
So a split grade print goes as follows. I'm using two grades of light, typically a very, very low contrast, like a zero or a double zero, and a very, very high contrast, like a four or a five. This involves finding an amount of time I need for my lower contrast value to start printing down highlights. So that means how, what's the minimum amount of time I can hit this with a grade zero or double zero so that these brighter highlights start showing up in the print. I need to find that time. Then I also need to find what my grade five time is. So what's the amount of time I need to get crispy, nice dark blacks uh, in the shadows with a grade five? Because if I print with a straight grade five, I'm gonna get black and a lot of white and no in-between. And when I print with a double zero, I'm gonna get a lot of flat gray. Uh, but the important part here is that I get just enough gray out of the highlight value and just enough deep black out of the shadows that it looks kind of normalized when we're all said and done. So this is our split grade. It's not perfect, but this is really, really close to the scan already, minus the extra burning I would need to do into this area. But let's take a look at it. Those are some test strips. Those are the split grade test strips. But let's take a look at this versus the straight print. So that's a number four grade straight print. And you can see the highlights are like nowhere to be found, and the shadows just go a little bit more empty than I want them to here. So it allows me to kind of open up. So split grade printing is very similar to what we're doing in Photoshop and Lightroom when we start changing that histogram. We shift the shadows up, we shift the highlights down. So we're kind of bringing that print back into the printable range because the negative uh, is, is sitting at two extremes, very, very, very thin shadows and very, very, very crisp highlights up here. We're just bringing those back into range. Okay, so I did do something else with the prints. I backed off on my grade five time by a whole second, and you can see what happened. I ended up just getting a little bit flatter. You can go too deep on this, and it's very possible to start analyzing and overanalyzing. And you, at some point, you have to say enough is enough, take a break, take a step back, call it a day. In this case, this is my last sheet of paper, so I have to call it a day. So at this point, I'm gonna stop where I'm at. I'm gonna stop while I'm ahead. I'm gonna get these rinsed off through the dryer and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. That about does it for today. I had 15 sheets left of a 25 sheet box of uh, RC glossy paper. Took six of my favorite negatives from my barbershop series that started over a decade ago. Made some contact prints and shared the process with you guys. One thing about winter time that I think uh, kind of gets a lot of photographers down is, oh, I can't go out and shoot. It's even harder to get outside when it's cold and snowy. Uh, there's a lot of snow going on right here in Ohio. So taking time to go back through the backlog, taking stock of the work you have, or maybe some things that you needed to catch up on, some scanning, contact prints, finishing the website. These are all things that we can do to keep ourselves busy, even in the, you know, quote unquote, off season. I don't think there's a bad time for large format, but some are more favorable than others. If you have any questions about the darkroom printing process or large format photography, you can always feel free to drop one down below in the comments. And if you have any of those long form questions, you can always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.